Hi everyone, I hope you guys are doing well and staying safe. My name is Kunal Malhotra and as per HSBC's initiative to make your days at home a bit more exciting, I'm here to take a session on smartphone photography, basically helping you guys to click better images using your smartphone camera. So let's get started with this session. So before I start sharing some amazing tips and tricks related to smartphone photography, I would suggest you all to have your smartphone camera with you while this session is being conducted because uh, while you're watching there would be few tips which I would suggest you to pause the video if possible and try it out practically to see the magic that you can create using those tips. Now the very first topic that I would like to start this session with is five must know smartphone camera tips that every smartphone user must follow and the first one has to be Whenever we are outside or shooting images using a smartphone camera, what happens is we take out our smartphone, we unlock it, we open the camera app and we randomly start shooting. The first thing that you have to do is clean your lens because this camera lens is prone to fingerprint uh, touches and it can get moisture as well while it's in your pocket, especially during this summer time. So it's always better to clean it with a cotton or whatever cloth that you have to make sure that it's clean and then start shooting your photos. And the second thing, once you are done with this cleaning your lens thing, one thing that I always make sure that I'm following is tap to focus. So what happens is when you are clicking photos, beat any subject, what you might be doing is simply point your camera at the subject and click the shutter button. Now one mistake that might occur is the focus might be on a different subject altogether. So to make sure that the focus is on your subject, I always make sure that I tap on my subject at least two times to make sure that the focus is on that subject where I want it to be and then I click the photo to make sure that my subject is in focus and it's sharp. Now moving on to the third tip, I would suggest you all to use this tap feature not only for focusing but also for adjusting the exposure. Exposure basically means the brightness of your photo. So sometimes what might happen is while we are clicking photos, we tap on the subject and we realize that the photo is either very bright or very dark. What you can do is in most of the uh, Android and iOS devices, you can simply tap on your subject and you will get a scale of exposure that allows you to either bring down the exposure or increase the exposure resulting in a darker or a brighter image. So this you can use to make sure that if you are by default getting a dark image, you can move that scale towards plus to get a brighter image and vice versa to make sure if your image is a bit brighter, bring it towards the minus to make it Correct. Now moving on to the next step, this is one thing that I tell to every smartphone camera user that never zoom in, pinch and zoom in in your photo because that results in a pixelated image and the total pixel size of your image reduces. So for example, you are using a smartphone camera which is for example 12 megapixel and if you zoom in by pinching and trying to zoom it like 2x, 5x, 10x, that results in maybe a lower resolution image of 2 megapixel or 5 megapixel. So one escape could be if your smartphone camera has optical zoom, like you can find it out if you Google and find out the optical zoom range of your smartphone camera. If it has a 2x or 5x optical zoom, that's great. But if it does not, I would suggest you not to pinch and zoom in. It's better you get closer to the subject, then take a photo. It will result in one better resolution and two sharper image. So if you are wondering why you are zooming into an image you are not getting sharp and better focused images, this could be one of the reasons. Now talking about the fifth and the last step in this segment is using the grid lines. So you can see a preview over here. There are two lines vertically and two lines horizontally. So these grid lines, one, it ensures that if there's any scale that's there in your image, for example, if you're shooting a monument or a building, which should be ideally straightened, but while you're clicking, it's a bit tilted towards left or right. So using this scale, you can make sure that uh, before clicking, your lines, but the horizontal or the vertical line will ensure that your subject is straight and you are clicking better images. Uh, otherwise, you'll have to uh, edit that image in an editing software and then rely on that and that could be a tedious thing. So it's better to use this grid line to make sure that you are clicking straight images. So these were five uh, smartphone camera tips that I would suggest you to always keep in mind irrespective of 
the condition or the situation that you are shooting in. Now let's talk a bit about composition because composition plays a very important role in mobile photography. So when you are composing a photo, it can be uh, shot in different ways. A single frame can be shot in 100 different angles and perspectives. So there are five composition rules that I would like to talk about in this uh, session. So the very first composition rule that I would like to talk about is rule of thirds. The last step that I referred to uh, just a few minutes back was grid lines. So this grid lines is basically used for composing your images using the rule of thirds. What is rule of thirds exactly? Basically two vertical and two horizontal lines are drawn in your frame and the points where these vertical and horizontal lines meet these intersection points one of these four could be the rule of thirds composition rule. So what you have to make sure whenever you're framing a photo like right now I'm in this video if I move to this point I'm using the rule of thirds if I'm here again I'm using the rule of thirds if I move here same and over here same. So one option is either I could be in the center of the frame but what this does is it only gives the attention on the frame but if I move a bit off center then you can see the surrounding as well. Here are a few samples that I've clicked using rule of thirds along with the grid line so that you can see how this rule of third exactly works. It basically ensures you to show the environment around the subject and whenever I'm shooting anything if I find it really interesting the subject is really good and the background is equally good whatever is happening around that subject. So what I would do is I would keep it off center in one of these intersection points and frame my photo and click it and something like this can be achieved using rule of thirds. Next composition rule is leading lines. Leading lines from the name you can easily know what it exactly means. Here's a photo which you can refer to while I'm talking and explaining what leading line is. It's basically uh, when in foreground there is an element or a subject that leads towards your main subject. It could be a human subject, a building or anything that's your main subject in the photo but you compose your frame in such a manner that the foreground is maybe a railway track, a road, anything that has leading lines and it leads towards your subject. So right now if you see this thing, so what I'm doing is it is basically leading you towards my face. So this is just an uh, odd representation but I'm showing you some reference photos which will help you understand a few references of leading lines. So whenever you are uh, clicking something just change your perspective maybe go a bit low angle or find a foreground element which is leading towards your subject and that would help you capture something unique something different from what others might be clicking. Frame in frame is the third composition rule that I would like to talk about because this is personally my favorite composition rule. So over here what you can do is frame is basically what we are clicking. Our frame is basically the scene that we want to capture in our photo but what you can do is you can add another frame in the foreground, a window, uh, anything that's there through which you can shoot your subject. Here are a few samples that you can refer to. So in this photo if you look carefully I've shot my frame through another frame that is basically a structure through which I've shot this photo and there are a few more examples. The same thing is happening in all these images. There's one main subject which is the frame and the second thing is in the foreground which is another frame. So that is why we call it frame in frame. It basically adds dimension to your image, it gives depth to your image and it makes your photo unique from what others at that same location with their smartphone cameras might be clicking. Fourth composition rule would be symmetry and balance. Symmetry can sometimes be really mesmerizing to see once you have clicked your photo. Symmetry from the name as you can clearly make out it is basically making sure that your photo when divided into half is it basically appears similar on the left side and on the right hand side. It's mostly used in uh, buildings, structures or uh, monuments which are very symmetrical when we see them but when we capture we usually frame anything and everything and later we just look at that photo and we are not liking that image. One reason could be we are not going for the symmetrical approach. So the next time that you are at a monument or a building make sure one that you are 
when you're looking at that scene, it's symmetrical. Second thing, when you use your smartphone camera, you're making sure that you're using those grid lines to make sure it's not tilted towards left or right. And it's towards the center, making sure that the left part and the right part of the scene appears symmetrical. Now talking about fifth and the most exciting composition rule that is fishing technique. So in this composition rule, what happens is, unlike other four composition rules where you are on the spot making decisions, a uh, fishing technique is basically you find a really interesting uh, subject or maybe a frame. Let's suppose a very good uh, stairs or windows or reflection and you're still missing on that wow factor in the image. So what I usually do is I find, for example, if I found a really good reflection, uh, this is one photo which while I was exiting from a metro station, I noticed this reflection on the tiles. So I waited there for five minutes and like five or six people came, went, came, went. And this is one frame that I finally decided to click. And over here, you can clearly see that I was fishing for that perfect frame, but my human element was missing. So in this technique, what you have to do is look for a great frame that you think could be a really amazing shot, but that human element is missing. So be there, take your smartphone camera, hold it, and wait for the subject to enter your frame. The moment your subject enters, start clicking photos and I'm sure you would get some amazing images. So these were five composition rules that I as a smartphone photographer always follow and keep in my mind while I'm there shooting images of some amazing subjects. Now moving on to very interesting uh, subject of this session that is portrait photography. I'm sure some of you would love to get yourself clicked or click portraits of your friends or family members. And in this session, I would majorly be talking about how you can take some amazing looking portrait shots using your smartphone camera. And for that, the first thing that I would advise you to do is like initially I talked about tap and focus on your subject. This time you have to do that same thing, but one key aspect of a appealing portrait photo is the focus on the eyes. And for this thing, I would suggest you always while you are uh, composing your portrait shot, focus on the eye of the subject of which you are clicking portrait to make sure that one, the subject is in focus and two, the eye is in the focus and it's properly exposed because if the focus is not on the eye, it could be either on the ear or on the nose. And especially if you're using the portrait mode on your smartphone, which is there on almost many Android and iOS devices. So it's good to click portraits to get that background blur effect. But by chance, if you focus on uh, something maybe on the nose or the ear, there are chances that the photo might look out of focus. So I always ensure that the focus is on the eye and I always tap on the eye and compose my portrait shot. Now there's one thing that your smartphone camera cannot exactly control or adjust, but the nature can. I'm talking about the available light. So when you are outdoors, uh, maybe under the sunlight, you're shooting portraits, you have to learn as a smartphone photographer how to study the light. So right now, uh, if you see at my video, the light is coming from like 45 degree. If I move towards this side, the light is towards me. But what if the light source is behind the subject? So one thing, there would be no light on the subject. Two, the background would be overexposed, much brighter as compared to the light falling on the subject, which you have to avoid. So always make sure that the light is neither it's directly towards the face because it will make the face look completely flat and it's not that good looking image. I always uh, suggest that use a directional light, maybe a 45 degree or a 90 degree, something between 45 to 90. That gives you a dramatic light and it gives you uh, a professional looking portrait shot that you can easily get out of your smartphone camera. And the third and the last step is using your grid lines again. The composition rule, rule of thirds, that is one thing that I would suggest you to use if you are shooting it uh, horizontally, because in this mode, uh, your subject, if it's in center, you might be uh, maybe just focusing on the subject and not on the surroundings. If you're shooting at a really amazing uh, location, you would want that location to be highlighted as well. Maybe a really amazing place that you visit, but you're clicking a portrait uh, in a way that that photo can be clicked even in your state or even in your city or even outside your home. So it's better to keep it off center and show the surrounding that's there uh, while you are traveling or visiting interesting places. So now coming on to the last topic of this session, that is 
explaining manual mode, how it works, what it is, and what are the benefits of using a manual mode. And I'll be taking you through all the uh, different elements of a manual mode or a pro mode as many smartphone manufacturers have it. Somewhere you'll find pro mode, somewhere it's manual mode. It depends on different manufacturers or different uh, brands that they're selling. But one thing that's common in all the smartphones uh, using pro mode or the manual mode is that the basic difference between a normal mode and a manual mode is normally when we are clicking photos, what we do is we just take our phone, point it towards the what we want to click, tap, focus, everything is done, composition is done and we simply press the shutter button. The smartphone camera, it calculates the uh, shutter speed, aperture, basically the exposure is calculated by the phone itself, you have no control over it. That is what automatic mode is. But what happens is pro mode or the manual mode is you as a photographer have complete control over the exposure. So you can adjust the exposure, you can adjust the focus, you can manually focus, you can even adjust the white balance. So I'll take you through each and every element starting with ISO. So ISO basically means the sensitivity of the sensor. I would not get very deep into these technicalities, but it basically means that the higher the ISO number, the brighter the image would be. So if you are in a situation where you feel the images are being captured very dark, you have the option of increasing the ISO. But one thing, always start with ISO as the minimum number, 50 or 100. 100 is almost there in every smartphone. So always make sure that you're using the lowest ISO number. Only increase the ISO number when you feel that the light is really low or you have to get more light inside the smartphone camera. Because when you increase your ISO at a level maybe uh, 400 ISO or higher, 800, 1600, your images uh, tend to get a bit, uh, what you say, it, it get noise and it get grains. It does not look that appealing. So it's better to have it as low as possible. Second thing is the shutter speed. Shutter speed is basically the duration for which your camera uh, takes in the light coming from that frame. So for example, um, if I compare two shutter speeds, one would be one second. One second, basically the shutter opens for one second and then closes. So for one second, whatever motion and the light is there in the frame, it can be captured. Here's a sample that I captured using four second shutter speed. So what happened here is the movement of the subject was for four seconds and it was captured by the camera. To get similar photos, you have to use pro mode. So that is one major reason why I always prefer to use manual mode to have all the control over the exposure and the motion of my subject as a photographer in my hands. So shutter speed is basically the faster it is, the, uh, the action if it's this uh, car running in your uh, frame, if you click it at a faster shutter speed like 1 by 1000, 1 by 2000, that action, you can freeze that action. But at a slower shutter speed like 1 second or 2 second, you can actually capture that motion if it's at uh, night, maybe if the light is on of that car, you can capture that light rail using a slower shutter speed. So the combination of shutter speed and ISO is something that you have to learn over the time and once you master it, you can master the manual mode. The third element is focusing. So you have the option of uh, adjusting the focus manually. Either uh, you can keep it automatic where the camera decides where to focus. But if the distance between you and the subject right now, like I'm making this video, if I wish I can do it in manual focus mode because I'm hardly moving in the frame. I'm there. The distance between camera and me is exactly the same. So in such situations, it's better to have manual focus or in situations uh, where your phone is not able to focus on the subject, uh, switch to pro mode, go to focusing, uh, set it manually and then click a photo, your uh, frame or your subject would be in focus. Next thing is white balance. White balance is basically adjusting the temperature of the image, which ranges from yellowish tone to bluish tone. So you can do that manually. Maybe if you go to a lower temperature, like it makes the image look a bit cooler towards the blue side. If I increase the temperature of this white balance, it makes the image appear more warmer and towards the yellow side. So this is up to you how you wish to use it creatively or to correct the white balance. It's completely in your hands as a 
photographer. And that's pretty much it uh, from this session. I hope you guys got to learn a lot about smartphone photography. And I've shared some amazing uh, tips and tricks and some practical photos and experiences which will help you uh, improve your smartphone photography the next time you're traveling or during this lockdown if you wish to click some amazing images you can do that so i hope this was a fruitful session i would suggest you all to stay home and stay safe take care <laughs>